hello everyone. Uh, yet another Monday session of so which means session number four of uh, GCP. And uh, first of all, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, very happy to welcome to all of you and all your loved ones. I hope that you all have had a wonderful time with your families. And uh, I really do wish that all of you to have best of success in a very prosperous life on both, I mean, uh, your personal and professional life. And you do have all the success that you want to go and achieve. And uh, I also do hope that all of you are keeping yourself healthy. Your loved ones are healthy. They are keeping themselves away from this highly infectious virus. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about... Uh, the GCP session number four, right? So like last time in the notes, I discussed that uh, today we will go ahead and talk about how to go ahead and use uh, Python program and how to go ahead and utilize uh, Python to go ahead and extract data from GCS, uh, manipulate it maybe, and then go ahead and upload this data back into GCS. So that would be our aim today to go ahead and uh, see how we can actually go ahead and access GCP programmatically. And uh, over here, we will go and cover various points. One of the points would be to go and create service account as well, which will go and act as a bridge between both GCP and GCS, uh, sorry, between GCS and uh, your Python, wherever it is installed. And uh, the, through the service account, you can actually go ahead and get information from GCS to your, uh, within your Python program. And then you can go ahead and do all kind of manipulation. Then again, you can go ahead and send this data back into GCS for a long-term storage. Uh, one advice from me would be that if this is the first time that you are actually going ahead and going through this recording, uh, so please go through the first three sessions uh, to go ahead and get yourself equipped with the knowledge to go ahead and uh, understand the terms that I'm going ahead and using, and I will be going ahead and using uh, throughout the session, whether that be uh, GCP, GCS buckets, the objects, blobs, uh, the storage, the idea of storage location, storage class, and all these kind of things. That will come in really, really handy for all of you. So like I said, that we will be focusing on a few points today. Number one would be to go ahead and practically see how to go ahead and create uh, your GCS bucket and how to go ahead and upload data uh, within GCS bucket. For that, we'll be using CS normal, very normal CS2 file. And then how to go ahead and create a service account and then link it with your Python. And then go ahead and manipulate that data, maybe within Python, and then go ahead and upload it uh, within GCS. Uh, I will like also go ahead and use uh, Jupyter Notebook to go ahead and create a very small code, which I will also go ahead and share with all of you through Git. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what we will be going and discussing about. And towards the end, I will go ahead and give you a very small question. The whole idea would be so that you guys can actually go ahead and extend yourself a little, exert yourself a little more, and you all can actually go ahead and uh, create a folder within GCS, which is not existing till now. And just in case you would want to go and put a file within a specific folder by creating that folder within GCS, uh, that way you will be able to go and learn something new on your own. You will be able to acquire this knowledge, which can be very, very useful when you are actually going and working in your projects. So having said that, this is what the outline looks like for today. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into GCP now. Um, so I will now again go ahead and stop sharing my camera and we'll get back into my screen. So let's go ahead and do that uh, and uh, in case again you are having any suggestions for improvement you are having any specific topics that you would want to go and talk about do go ahead and let me know about it i'll be more than happy to go ahead and inculcate all those things all right so let's go into gcp console now all right guys so let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into gcp uh, what you see on my screen right now is the dashboard within gcp uh, you can actually go ahead and see all kinds of information about your project over here, uh, how it is being used and everything. So for now, I will go ahead and take a deeper dive into GCS, the Google Cloud Storage option. And if you see, it comes up on top for me. You might have to go ahead and scroll down a bit to go ahead and get to the Google Storage options. Uh, and if you go ahead and pin it, it will also go ahead and start coming up on top for yourself. You can go ahead and pin any... Uh, tool that you would want any service within gcs i have since i have been using google cloud storage a lot so i have it i have it pinned right at up at top for myself so i will get into the browser option to go ahead and see all kinds of buckets that i have created within my gcp project for this session let's go ahead and create a new bucket and uh, the concept of buckets and objects is something that we have already discussed about in the notes that I shared in our last session, session number three. 
so if you have not gone through it please do go through it if you don't remember it then also please go through it and have a quick revision of sorts it's fairly detailed it will go and give you a good idea about what google cloud storage is and how is it used and everything so let's go ahead and create our bucket over here so this is our workshop for bcs session number four uh let's go ahead and continue now you'll have to go ahead and select the region over here what kind of a region you would want to go ahead and have for your bucket and again the different regional options and how can you go ahead and create it what is the purpose and everything is being uh, discussed in fair bit of detail in the notes so please go through it and once you have selected the region for me i will go ahead and keep the default option of multi-region uh, then you can go ahead and select what kind of storage class would you go ahead and want for yourself again i will go ahead and keep the default standard option but again depending upon how do you want to go ahead and utilize your data what is the purpose of the storage you can actually go ahead and pick the right option for yourself again something that we have already discussed about uh, i will not get into the how do you want to go ahead and control access uh, or any of the advanced settings i will go ahead and keep everything default and i will just so if you see i have just put the name over here everything else is kind of a default option for myself and then i will go ahead and click on create so what will happen is that it will go ahead and create the bucket for myself so this is what you see my bucket number one that is workshop gcs session number four is already created over here now what i would want to go ahead and do is i would want to go ahead and uh, upload some data over here so for this particular session since i'm going to go ahead and showcase you how to manual how to go ahead and extract files from gcs uh, i will go ahead and quickly show you the data that i would want to go ahead and upload in in google cloud storage it's a fairly simple customer file that i'm having over here uh, there are some customer ids some customer account numbers first name last name email address age gender customer segment code that they belong to and their transaction ids pretty simple straightforward information that i'm having and uh, i will now go ahead and this is already stored in my folder in my windows machine this is my windows machine it's already stored in this workshop 3 folder so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and upload the files and i can go to the right path i can select my customer data and upload the csv over here all right so this csv is already uploaded you can get see the message over here as well that this file has been uploaded it's a fairly small file and this is something that we would want to go ahead and access through some kind of a program so let's go ahead and move the window away and i will go ahead and get my python window right over here so my code is already written on python uh, so i will go ahead uh, and show you how you can actually go ahead and utilize python to go ahead and extract data from gcs and manipulate that data and then again go ahead and put the file over there within gcs that's what we are trying to go ahead and do so i will go ahead and first of all import the library that i have already installed if you have not you might have to go ahead and install this library within python through anaconda bash or whatever so i will go ahead and import the file so this is the storage file that i'm trying to go ahead and import uh, i will also go ahead and import os and i will tell you why uh, was not import but import and as usual i will go ahead and import pandas i don't really need numpy so i won't do that uh, so that's that's where i am and let's go ahead and quickly run this so all my libraries would be included within my code so it's already run it's already executed so let's go to the next uh, box uh, over here i will go ahead and change the directory okay i would want everything to be in to be saved over here in this particular directory so I, what i will do is i will that's where that's why i have actually imported over so that i can actually go ahead and change directory so let me go ahead and do that as well so the command is pretty simple straightforward so let's go ahead and put this in 
it's uh, OS dot THDIR and over here you will go ahead and give the path that you would want so let's go ahead and get the path from here from my folder this is the path and remember this is a windows machine so what i'll have to go and do is i'll have to go and put r as a reference over here so that it can uh, see that this is a string and it's a windows machine and can go and put the escape characters by itself and uh, at the very same time okay let me just go and first of all execute this thing okay this line has been executed but i would want to go and check whether the path has already been changed or not so what i will do is i will go and quickly check my current working directory path that is pwd and i can actually go and see that this is my ecp workshop 3 that's the path that has been set over here so that's super my python is ready my gcs is ready uh, but they won't really go and talk to each other reason being that now i'll have to go and create a service account an account which can actually go ahead and hit my google cloud platform can go ahead and uh, manipulate or access the resources that i would want to so right now the resource that i'm using within google cloud platform is google cloud storage i would want to have a service account which can actually go ahead and uh, which can be used uh, through any kind of a programming la uh, language whether that be python sql r or whatever so that it can actually go ahead and make a kind of a connection within gcp and i can actually go and use the resources that I, the way that i would want to so let's go ahead and create a service account over here uh, service account can be created within api and services and i will go to credentials over here all your existing service accounts can be displayed so i've got a few service accounts that i have created for different things uh, for now i will go ahead and show you the simplest way to go ahead and do it so i will go ahead and create credentials i will go ahead and create a service account myself and let's go ahead and put the name over here so let's say this is workshop gcs session for service account and i will go ahead and put a small description over here test service account for workshop four right and Next up is to go ahead and give the access to this service account for my project and I will go ahead and give the owner access so that I do have everything, all resources under this one project, which can be accessed through this one service account. I can do that and I can now click on done. So this step is important. Make sure that you go ahead and do that. and my service account is created policies are updated and there you can actually go and see this is where my service account exists okay it's pretty simple so i'll just go and click on this and i will go ahead and create a json key for myself you could have created from the previous step as well but i just wanted to go ahead and show you in case you are having a service account but you haven't really created the keys for that how you can actually go and do it so i will go ahead and create a new key and i will create a json key over here so let's go ahead and create this thing <laughs> so that's done uh, let's go ahead and save this file real quick and it is saved in my downloads what i can do is i can actually go ahead and open this thing up This is where this file exists. I will go ahead and copy this thing and put it in my workshop folder. And if you want, you can even go ahead and change the name over here because it's a pretty complicated name. If you want to go ahead and put something simple at workshop GCS session four. Great, it's done. So I have got all my resources that I need to go ahead and access the account. Now the thing is, how can I go ahead and do it? How would I go ahead and access my GCS through Python? Let's go ahead and look into that option as well now. So this is my uh, Python notebook, my Jupyter notebook. Let's go to the next cell and 
actually go ahead and create a storage client over here. So pretty simple storage underscore client. And over here, I will actually go ahead and put my JSON key. So I will go ahead and first of all call a function storage dot client dot from service account JSON because I'm using JSON file. And over here, I will go ahead and put the JSON file name. So, what was my JSON file name? Let me just go ahead and get my folder over here, right over here. So, this is my JSON file name. I'll just go ahead and copy and we'll paste it over here and then put JSON over here. So, this is my file name that I would want to go ahead and put in. And then I will go ahead and put my bucket name. What was my bucket name? Once again, I will go ahead and look into my bucket that I have already created within GCS. So let's see what was my bucket name that I had created for myself. So ideally you should be having all these things handy with you all times. And let's wait for it to go and load. All right, so this is these are all my buckets that I have created and I have taken workshop GCS session four. This is my bucket name. I will go ahead and just copy this thing and we'll actually go ahead and put it right over here. This is my bucket name. Now I would want to go ahead and initialize my bucket with the help of again a function of storage class dot get underscore bucket and over here I will go ahead and put bucket underscore name. So what will happen is that it will go ahead and initialize my bucket for myself and I would want to go ahead and get the GCS file now. Okay, that's very very simple because remember that everything would be stored within GCS in the blob format, right? So this is my file name is customer data dot CSV. So what I will do is it's pretty simple. I will actually go ahead and create a blob, an op which will go ahead and have the house the object for me from Google bucket, uh, Google Cloud Storage bucket. So I will go ahead and say get underscore blob. Again, it's a blob type storage GCS for primarily for unstructured data. So my blob would be downloaded and would be put in over here. So it is customer's data, I believe. I will go ahead and check. Again, just want to get again. Customer data, not customer data, it's customer data. Dot CSV. So we are ready to go ahead and execute this. Let's go ahead and do that. Control enter, it has been executed, and there would be some value in the blob, right? And I would want to go ahead and check if there is any kind anything that has been downloaded in this blob or not. So, right? So I will go ahead and put a simple if check. So I will say if blob that I have just downloaded is none. Pretty simple. Then I will go ahead and get the message. No file found. Okay. And I'll say else. I'll go ahead and put this right over here. Else print customer data found. All right. So let's go ahead and check if my blob actually exists, if there are certain anything into it or not. I'll just go and execute it, and I can see that my customer data is already found. So if I go ahead and see this file, this file already exists. Let's say if I go ahead and make any kind of spelling mistake over here, I just say customer dat.csv. And then I go ahead and execute this, these two boxes, these two cells, and I can see that no file has been found because my file name was wrong over here. So I will again go ahead and rectify the name over here and we'll check if my file is found or not. So my blob should not be none. Okay, so my data is found but this data is found in blob form, right? 
Now I would want to go ahead and create it into data frame because that's how I would want to go ahead and manipulate my data in Python. So I will go ahead and add one more cell over here. Let's go ahead and check. Uh, let's go ahead and extract this customer data in the data frame format. So now I will go ahead and say my downloaded blob, the blob that I have downloaded is blob dot download. This is a CSV a text file, so I will go ahead and download it as a string. Okay, everything will be downloaded as a string. And S is equal to SDR. I will go ahead and change everything into string as well. And we'll go ahead and provide the encoding that I would want. In our case, I would want to go ahead and have it in UTF 8 encoding. And again, it also depends upon the language that you are using. In case you are using any of the Asian language, you might actually have to go and change the encoding over here. And this is why we downloaded the string IO, uh, we imported the string IO library because we wanted to go ahead and change this string of data into one continuous form so that we can now go ahead and extract this continuous form into a data frame. And I will go ahead and use the pandas function. We which you all might already be knowing about that is read.csv and I will go ahead and say data. So what I'm doing right now is I have down so whatever information was there in the blob I'm just downloading that information as a string changing the encoding to UTF-8 then making this string into a continuous form putting in data and now this data because it's a CSV a primarily a CSV file that was downloaded as a blob and then changed into a string I'm just going ahead and again changing into a data frame with the function, uh, a pandas function, very simple function, pd dot read underscore csv. Again, something that you already might be knowing about. And let's go ahead and quickly execute this cell. Okay. Ah. And this is the reason why I wanted to go ahead and import my string IO right over here in case you have not downloaded imported your string io it will go ahead and give you this error so i will go ahead and import my string io right over here itself so let's go ahead and run it again and now i should be having a data frame but i would want to go and check if it's actually in the right format or not so let's go ahead and do a simple head command for this and I can actually go and see over here. So I'm having my customer IDs, my account numbers, my first name, last name, email addresses, age, gender, customer segment codes, and transaction IDs. Pretty much what we saw in our CSV. So it's the same file, right? Let's go ahead and quickly add one more column over here. Let's say df. And let's go ahead and put the name of the column as this. And uh, Let's put the simple value of data inserted. Okay. So now what will happen is that it will go ahead and create another column towards the end. If I again go ahead and check. F dot head. What I'll see is text column is right over here. I hope you all can actually go and see it. So now my next task is to go ahead and upload this file back to GCS. So let's go ahead and do that. To go ahead and upload the file, I will again go ahead and make a connection with the bucket. I will go again go ahead and kind of make a connection with the block, and then we'll go ahead and up, uh, upload this file. So pretty much the same way that I did earlier. Uh, I'm just doing it again because at times the connection can be timed out or whatever so for this reason i just go ahead and just to be on the safe side i will go ahead and, and uh, um, connect it once again because oh, uh, that is workshop session four so let me just go ahead and just copy this right over here okay that way okay that's done now what i would want to go ahead and do is First of all, this data frame that I have created over here, this DF has to be converted into a CSV file so that I can go and again 
upload the CSV file that I would want. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I will go ahead and say df dot to underscore underscore PSV. Uh, let me go ahead and put the name of this file. Let's say updated customer data dot CSV. And I will go ahead and put index as false. I do not want any index. It just creates uh, unusual requests, uh, unusual column over there. So I have just removed that. So what I've done is I have again connected to my bucket. I have created this file over here. Okay, my name is IUO. So I will go ahead and put, I'll just change the spelling over here real quick. Updated customer data. I'll just go and execute it once again. I should be having two files over here now. One is UO updated because I misspelled it. So I'll go ahead and quickly delete it. And I have now updated customer data right over here. Okay, so my updated customer data.csv is already formed. My connection with the bucket is already done. Next up is to go ahead and understand how would I want to go ahead and save this file. I would want to go ahead and put the file name, let's say when I go ahead and store over there within PCS, I would want to go ahead and put the same file name, let's say updated customer data.csv. I will keep that and I will I will go ahead and connect with the blob once again again remember that the blob storage place the gcs so i will go ahead and again create a blob in this time so i'm not getting the blob so if you remember the last function was get blob so i'm not getting any blob i'm creating a blob over here so i'm just using this function and i can just go ahead and put file name over here simple the file name can be created within the bucket and now if i want i can act now i can actually go ahead and upload the csv that has already been created in this folder so this csv would be uploaded within my gc so let's go ahead and see how to do that that's a very simple command that is blob is equal to, uh, sorry blob dot upload from file name and what is the file name over here file name is this is file name right I'll just go ahead and put this thing and let's go ahead and execute this okay let's give it better Yes, I have again. Misspelled the function name over here. Let's go ahead and execute it this time. And now it has been executed. And ideally, my file name with the name of update customer data should be there now in my GCS. Let's go ahead and see if it's over there or not. So this is my GCS. Let's go ahead and refresh this thing real quick. Just refresh the page. So my updated customer name, uh, customer data file should already be over here. All right, so I can see that there are two files. Number one is customer data and then updated customer data. This is what I have created. So customer data is not having the test column. Updated customer data should be having the test column. So let's go for and find it real quick. If that is the case or not. So let's go and download the file. And open with the Excel default, that should be okay for us because we just want to go and check real quick. Uh, wait for it to open, and this is the file that has opened for me. So it's having the customer ID, the account numbers, the first name, last name, email address, age, gender, customer, segment code, transactions, and then. Finally, the column that I created within Python. That is this particular column of test with only one value that is data inserted. So I can actually go ahead and check from my earlier file that there was no test column earlier. Now I'm having test column. So that's that's what I wanted. And it's done. So it's a pretty straightforward code. If you actually go ahead and see, there's nothing much into it. 
what I will do is I'll just go ahead and uh, pretty much add another cell at the bottom and let me just go ahead and show you how small this whole code is. So I'll just go ahead and paste everything over here. So whatever we have done earlier, I'll just go ahead and from all the cells, I will go ahead and paste it over here just to go ahead and showcase how easy it is and how simple it is. And what I will do is I will actually go ahead and put it on Git and I will go ahead and share my Git file with all of you. And it is having all, all errors checks that you might want to go ahead and have in case you would want to have some other additional checks. You can actually go and configure it within Python. I believe that that shouldn't be any kind of a challenge to you. So. I don't really need to go ahead and check the head once again. So just go ahead and put everything over here. Okay, let me go and put the head. Why not? If I'm putting everything, then why not this as well? I did check head once again. Let me go ahead and do that over here as well. And uh, this is when I made the connection to the bucket once again and created my data frame into a CSV file. And then this is the final data insertion. Within GPS, if you go ahead and see what 50, 60 lines of code, and that's about it. Uh, and some of these things you can actually go ahead and uh, change as well. Uh, I believe this is something that I have done twice, maybe. Yeah, so I'll just go ahead and him. Okay, so this is it. It's pretty straightforward code that we have over here. Again, like I said, that I will go ahead and put it in Git, you, which you can actually go and access whenever you would want. And that's it. That's the code to go ahead and access your files from GCS. Download those files from GCS. You can actually go ahead and have your operations within your local systems or wherever you have created your Python uh, notebook in cloud or wherever. And then you can actually go ahead and after your operations, you can again go ahead and save it back within your GCS. Well, a few things that you'll have to go ahead and keep in mind. Number one, do it through service account. Easier way, best way. It's a little more uh, easy to go ahead and put controls on your service account than any through any other way. Uh, secondly, what you'll have to go and keep in mind is that uh, you will have to go and do all the operations within your wherever you have uh, you are operating your Python from, because Google Cloud Storage is basically an object-based storage system a blob based storage system primarily for unstructured data so you cannot go and do any kind of a processing within gcs so you can go and download the files from there and then all the processing has to happen in your local system or wherever you have opened your python from so that's that is something that you'll have to go and keep in mind uh, yeah so as an exercise now what i would ask you to do is let's say you would want to go ahead and this time upload data not within this buckets home folder but on a different folder within gcs bucket which is not existing right now let's say you would want to go ahead and have another folder over here uh, with the name output and you would want to go ahead and put your updated customers data within that output folder so how would you go ahead and do that so that is something uh, that that can be a little interesting for you it's not complicated at all i promise uh, what you can do is you can actually go and have an input folder put your customer data over there from your output folder uh, create one more output folder and save your uh, output file over there and make sure that the file uh, from your input folder is deleted so you can actually go and build layer of complexities over here all this will actually help you to go ahead and learn gcs and gcp in a much better way so as you have seen it's pretty straightforward pretty simple to go ahead and uh, create uh, this this code to access your files the way that you would want i hope that you are liking these sessions the pace of the session is not too high it's not too slow it's not too fast and you are able to go ahead and follow uh, in case you are having any suggestions any ideas for improvement anything in particular that you would want me to go ahead and talk about please do let me know i won't say that i am absolutely amazing in gca gcp gcs and all that 
which I'm not, not by any stretch of imagination, but I'm having some ideas and I know a lot of people who are great into that. So if you are having some questions, some suggestions do let me know and I will try to go and inculcate the same in, in subsequent sessions. Okay, guys, so that's that's about it from my side today. And I hope that you are liking these sessions uh, and happy learning to all of you. Best of luck, everyone. Take care. Bye.